This podcast is sponsored by MPB. All right, everyone, welcome along to this brand new podcast, the Animal Anomalies podcast with your host, Wildlife with Cookie, and your co-host over to my left. Jacob. All right, mate, how you doing? Good, I'm good. Are you excited? You? Yeah, yes. I'm good, mate. Yeah, I'm good. I'm excited. Like, I'm a bit yeah. nervous, actually, because we're in a full-on studio for this. Yeah, and plus, like, the window there. Yeah, there's people outside. You can't see it, like, but it's quite... There's loads of people out there. It's like, like some, like, zoo animal. Honestly, I, I feel this is what it's like to be in a zoo, isn't it? Yeah. I've like, got people looking in at, like, what we're doing. It's like, oh, Christ. Before we get into it, though, this podcast is sponsored by MPB. MPB is the largest global platform to buy, sell, and trade used photography and videography equipment. It is a fantastic platform, which you can find yourself some DSLR cameras, some drones, some action cameras. Whatever you need to go and be creative, MPB will have it there just for you i've used it myself i've got a canon r5 and a 100 to 500 millimeter lens and it was absolutely amazing and on average people that buy from mpb will be spending nearly a third less than if they were to buy new so for me it makes sense get yourself over to mpb but anyway back to the podcast but there's also someone else in the room uh we haven't mentioned and we're gonna pan you over now ready but shut <laughs> there we go and this this is rachel hello all right, mate. All right. So Rachel is, uh, she's my sister, all right? I've got her in here because she ain't got a clue about wildlife. <laughs> so I've got a YouTube channel, do work, loads of wildlife stuff, TikTok and all that sort of stuff. You are at university yeah. doing wildlife. You're a photographer, do all of this sort of fun stuff. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and then we've got this, who just sort of... I can give you the basic name of an animal yeah and that's about it that about it yeah right well that's good i suppose at least we've got some sort of knowledge there isn't it mm -hmm. you, I, but the reason the reason you're here though is obviously for the banter yeah and we've got well we want to get someone's like knowledge or lack of in some of the topics we're going to talk about I from that outside view you know what i mean I feel like yeah. i'll be able to ask questions that normal people would want to know yeah you two yeah. both know it mm. i don't so I feel like normal people need to know. Yeah, exactly. And I think yeah, that's yeah. the whole point, isn't it? But um, so it's going to be, it could be a bit hit or miss. You never know. The, mm -hmm. the knowledge could be an absolute shocker. But what we do know is a lot about weird stuff in the UK. So when we're talking about the main topic of this episode, we're going to be talking about animal anomalies of the UK as the show is called, right? And we've got some really cool stuff in the UK that a lot of people, like Rachel, wouldn't know about. We wanted to get to know each other first, yeah. right? And wanted to try and find out if you guys have got any, like, funny or scary sort of experiences with wildlife. Like, have you have you had anything that's happened to you? Like, do you want, do you want to talk about uh, yours first? Have you got anything? Is anything uh, straight to your think. mind? Rachel, you? Uh, Been chased by a badger or a swan or something like that? Do you know what I mean? Um, I've had Swan look at me the wrong way once, but like, <laughs> I wouldn't say that was overly scary. <laughs> I'm absolutely petrified of badgers. Yeah. I don't say that. But, nah. It's weird, isn't it? They badgers are cute. End of. When has a badger ever eaten a person? <laughs> you never know. They right. wouldn't know. But I've always thought, she's always said this, and I'm always yeah. like, badgers are mad cute. Now, no, yeah. they, they are, aren't they? Like Eurasian badger we're talking about. So this this is like a, it's a, it's a nice badger. Yeah. It's a nice looking badger. It's not like the American badger, which are all like weird They're looking. The badgers. No. They're so the kind of badger. This is what I'm talking about. This is why she's here. Because no, it's not a honey badger. Um, it's an American badger. Mm. It's like... Right, I think you're gonna to have to do the first bit of like getting a screen oh, yeah. up here and find like Get find, find yeah finding the picture of it because um, an American badger and a Eurasian badger I've got like differences and this is one of the nice things about the UK wildlife actually is the Eurasian badger is a a, a really nice looking black and white animal. Oh, this is an American badger. Yeah, so that <laughs> that thing right there, that absolute monstrosity. Look at the state of that. It's like ours, but something's gone a bit wrong. It's just, oh, so look, it's a this shocker, is... isn't it? It's just a vicious version of ours. Yeah. So here's here's a good one. Rachel's found look, a little comparison between an American badger and a Eurasian badger. Look at that one on the right there. That's so cute. Yeah. Don't see how you're scared of that. But honestly, that thing's really, really cute. What's right. the beef with that? It's got cute little ears with its little tufty, tufty bits, <laughs> but it's massive. Clawy, horrible toes. No. And it's massive teeth that no. I know are inside. Outrageous, that to be honest. Face. That's ridiculous. What about the one on the left, then? 
Does that scare you as well? Adorable. He just looks a bit more... <laughs> <laughs> he just looks a bit more um, angry. Right. Like, looks like he would be more into a fight. Yeah. But I yeah. feel like the Europe one... Have you? It would just have you. No chance. Absolutely no chance. They're really, really, really sweet. I mean, like, just take a look at this. This this thing's weird. Look at the state of that. Look at that one. Honest, yeah, look at that. <laughs> that is aggressive. Look at the state of that. That's a horrible looking thing there. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I mean, I think it's probably a bit of a good thumbnail but oh, yeah. for a YouTube video. But still, can you can you just search up the Eurasian badger so we can show the people what, what they're missing out on if they're not from the UK? I mean, you don't see these... Uh, is that it? Yeah, European's mm. good. <laughs> You, you don't really see these very much because they're quite like rare. They're a bit nocturnal and that. But this is much better than what you'd be seeing out in America. Look at that. Oh, yeah. That yeah. is the cutest thing. But it's going to be cute in a photo, isn't it? It's when you see what do you mean? It, it's when you see it. Well, you the turn dark. the camera off and it's just. <laughs> it's when you see it in the dark and it comfier. Oh yeah, is that how it works? Yeah. Is it? Look, right. look, look, pray in, look, won't you? I, do you reckon there's ever been like a recorded fatality from a European badger? I do, in uh, the there UK. probably is, but do you reckon of a, a fully grown adult in like entirety of human history? There's probably at least one, but it's going to be rare. Let's look at the state. There's no way that little thing. Nah, but they are quite vicious. Like, you oh, they can like be. Yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, but to, towards people, I don't. Well, no, think they're just so. scared of us. Yeah, they're, they're that small. They're, yeah, they'll run, run away. away. I can't believe you're scared of them. But you've you've never had an experience with one, right? No. <laughs> So where does the thing come just, from? <laughs> just, you just hate badgers? I think it was probably when I was about six or seven. We were near our house, and somebody that we used to be friends with told me that they used to eat people, and they chased people and eat them. <laughs> and ever since then, no. Right, okay. Fair enough. It's born out of childhood. Mm. It's weird, because I've actually got a little thing with badgers, which I love badgers, by the way, but like the thing with badgers for me is... When I was younger, I swear in school they were doing some like road safety thing. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? You know what's coming on yeah. it. We, they were doing some like road safety thing, right? Right. And they were talking about, you know, those like circular dishes, those like sort of like, um, I would just describe it like half so a circle, right? On, like, half a ball right, sort of thing. Yeah, they're on uh, the mirrors. Yeah, 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 the mirrors, right? This, these mirrors, like um, circular thing, big mirror, fish eye, so you can see like the roads and stuff mm -hmm. coming out of a drive. I was, I swear to God, in that it was telling us this thing is for badgers, right? And it was, so, <laughs> it was so the badgers could cross the road, and I was like, makes perfect sense. We're, we're looking after the wildlife. You want the wildlife to cross the road, all right? So yeah, they're gonna look at these things and think safe. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I for the longest time, until I was about twenty-one, but that was my longest one. Yeah, because yeah, you remember finding this out in yeah. the car. It was a shambles, mate. Yeah, me, oh, jeez. Honestly. Me, me, Mum and James were in the car, and I can't remember what we said, but we said something about one of these mirrors, mm. and James went, but they're Badger Crossings. <laughs> and we were like, sorry? He said, that's where the Badgers cross the road. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, it's one of those things. A, a lot of people will go through their life with something like that and just never know. Do you know what I mean? I don't think quite as odd as that, but... Yeah, it's quite an obscure one, that, isn't it? But yeah. like, I honestly thought Badger Crossings, really weird. <laughs> But anyway, back to it. Have you had a scary experience with like animals or anything like that? Have you had uh, anything where you've been chased by an animal or you've you've seen something yeah. funny? I mean, over in the summer when I was in Costa Rica. Oh yeah. And stuff. Big up. Uh, my family were chilling by the pool and everything. I got a bit bored, so I decided to go off for a walk in the forest. Got surrounded by a big old family group of capuchins. Oh no. A what? Mon monkey. Mon little, yeah, monkeys. little monkey. <laughs> little monkey. That one. <laughs> but, um, and yeah, I was kind of sat just chilling with them, like taking pictures and everything. And then one of them just decided he didn't like me. And, and so for he started going for Did me. it? Yeah. Oh, man. He was like just jumping through the trees, just yelling at me. I was like, oh, oh what do I do? Did, uh, did, he, did he go for you? Like, did he attack you? He's kind of just trying to like show off. And yeah. Be like, like, get like, out. Yeah. Stuff. Territory sort of thing. Yeah. But did he, you have any food on you? No. Nah. Uh -huh. He just thought, no, I'm sick just, of him. Just get didn't out. like his picture being taken. So yeah. Just had a go at me. Oh, that's mad. Yeah, no, because that yeah. monkey scare me a bit, right? Because obviously the intelligence and yeah. the way they can gang up, that can feel like quite an intimidating thing, isn't it? I, I would imagine. Well, it was, was yeah. In, um, yeah. Singapore, me and the girl I went with, Jess, um, she had a rucksack with, I think, a sandwich or something in her bag, and there was monkeys all just sort of roaming around there. Um, I think two or three monkeys jumped on her back to try and get into her bag really? to get her food. Nah, see, I'm not about it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not it about that. Me, but... Honestly, like, cause I, 
because there's some in Gibraltar, right? Um, so Gibraltar is a real tiny sort of. It's, I mean, it's classed as a country, but is it? It's just it's a is territory, it, isn't it? It's a tiny little bit of Spain, and it's like there's there's weirdly some monkeys there. Yeah. But like I, I want to go and film them at some no, point. Yeah, it'd be awesome. really cool, really interesting thing. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't want to get jumped by a monkey. Do you know what I mean? Like you see it, you see these videos yeah, yeah. on TikTok and that, and like monkeys, like oh, what was that one about? That monkey was on a motorbike. You see that one, and it robbed yeah, a kid. <laughs> yeah, but you see that. <laughs> Honestly, it was mental. It like come up on a little little moped, didn't it? And it no, yeah, like, I've seen it. Drop the moped, grab the kid, and try to run away. Yeah, with but it. I don't think you're going to go to Gibraltar and it's going to be going around on mopeds. <laughs> <It's> just <laughs> little gangs of monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> but could you imagine the state of that though? That would be awful, wouldn't it? Just Planet of the Apes type Planet stuff. of the Apes, literally, it's it's happening. Um, so my my scary wildlife thing was in Australia. Right. Uh, it was a cassowary. You know what a cassowary is. Big bird. Yeah. Do, do that again. Show, show, show everyone what you're doing. The big birds. They've got like the big... <laughs> What's that? That was me like hitting, yeah. hitting with my head. Right, so well, one of them. yeah, one of them. Um, so a cassowary... Um, we were looking for them because I wanted to film them for my Animal Anomaly show, uh, which I do on YouTube. And... It was it was really it was sick, right? That place up in like the northeast of Australia, uh, the Daintree Rainforest, that surrounding area, it's absolutely amazing. Like absolutely love it. And we we sort of we found this one place where loads of people were saying, right, you need to go there. This is gonna be the place where you see them. So we're like, cool. Went the first day, wasn't there. Bit like, ah, everyone was saying this is a banker. So we went the next time. Literally within five minutes of being there, Katie, who I was with at the time, uh, my girlfriend, she she saw it. So we went running after it. And it, this thing was on the beach. Is that a bird that you want to run after? Do you want to uh, have a little look at what they look like? Because, sure. uh, no. The answer is no. You don't really want to be running after a cassowary. Because these things, right, they can grow up to, like, six feet tall. Okay. They are big, big birds, yeah? And they've got the cask on their head. They're used to, like, sort of a uh, display as well as maybe... <laughs> Good. That's right. wicked, yeah. that. Wicked. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Um, so we, they're really aggressive but the big thing about them they're six feet they, they can jump high run fast they've got a massive claw um, so Rachel's got it on the screen right now this uh, this is a cassowary and these are like really scary looking um, big birds so you know that one we can see on the beach just there yeah that is pretty much where I was um, it, it, probably where it's taken anyway so anyway we get on the beach um, I'm like running around with a camera trying to film it I'm like uh, trying to get close up, so all these sort of cool shots, and then because I, I sort of predict its path and it's running down this way, um, I'm like, all right, I get, I'll get in front of it, and I'll get a head-on shot. So I run, I'm like running, 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 and then I get in front of it, and I'm like filming it, and I'm like, hang on a second, <laughs> I was like, he's walking towards me, obviously. I'm like, what am I doing? Luckily, and this is in the video, um, it just walked straight past me. The second encounter I had a little bit later, same day. And this yeah. uh, this scared me, man, because this was like this was this was the bad one. So we were in this like it's like a caravan park on the beach, right? Mm -hmm. And this cassowary is like lo looking around for food, mm -hmm. like because they eat like apples whole and stuff, right? Um, just wow. just swallow an apple, cool. and yeah, <laughs> and uh, this thing's bigger. This way bigger. Yeah. Uh, the cask is bigger. It's about five and a half feet tall. It's massive, and it's walking around. We're we're within like three or four meters of it, and I'm nervous anyway. Yeah. But Katie, who I'm with, um, decides to pull this thing out of her pocket. It's a moisturising cream for, like, insects, like insect repellent sort of thing. Because we're getting bitten alive by mosquitoes and sandflies and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, she pops the lid, literally, like, like that. And this thing, I swear to God, it's <laughs> sideline. It just goes, stares at us. And I'm like, oh, no, Kate, what have you done? Like, what have you done? This thing's, like, it's staring at us. And honestly, like a T-Rex in Jurassic Park, it, like... It, it, it's like bounding, plod, plod, plod sort of thing, right yeah. towards us. It gets, and I mean, like, we're squaring up to it right now. Mm. Like, me and you, as far as, like, the way we are, no, yeah. this is it. We're squaring up to it, and I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> so I get Katie behind me. I get in front of it, getting all big, and I remember this Steve Irwin thing. I can't remember what it was, but he, he was in, like, Africa cause, to do with cheaters. But he said, like, to scare stuff like this, you've got to get big, and you've got to make a noise. So in my head, I'm thinking this, and I'm, like, nervous. I'm shaking. I'm like, oh, my God. And then I'm like, Steve Irwin. So I, I, I raise my arms up slowly, and I go, <laughs> And I swear to God, this thing, it just sort of looks at me like, 
what, what are you doing? <laughs> and it was like, all right. And it just carries on its day. But I swear to God, in that moment, I thought, I might have to scrap a cassowary. How tall did you say these are? They can go up to like six feet. Yeah, they're big. Massive, mate. Like when you see them running, because they, they sort of like, um, but we saw one run across the road in the Daintree Rainforest. I, it looked like I was in flipping Jurassic Park. They're really cool, by the way. Fantastic animals. Um, properly endangered in uh, Australia. But it's just a wicked, wicked thing. But it's it's one of them you don't really want to get on the wrong side of because it's flipping terrifying, mate. It's I can't lie to you. It's that like, rock on their head. That <laughs> yeah. I that, imagine that would do some damage. But that's that's the thing, though, because that thing isn't isn't really what they used to fight. Nah, now, the way they feet. fight is the feet, right? And they sort of run and, like, karate kick, double kick. What was that you were doing? It was just... Right, no. They don't do that. I'm just trying to pinch you in Yeah, the it's little, the little crab bird, isn't it? No, they they sort of run up and, like, bang, bang, double kick. There's a video on YouTube, but we, we won't be able to watch that. But it's insane. No, yeah. It's, yeah. And I thought, in that moment, for me, I thought, I'm going to have to... I'm going to karate kick a... Cassowary. Well, no, if you're going up against one, you're not winning. I'm probably not winning. What no. do you mean? Up against if, one of these things. If that is head and then dinosaur toes, I don't like, think you'll be Look at the, f- the claws. Look at the flipping claws on that thing. Honestly. Like, that's just slicing you. Because you, as well, because it's like three-pronged foot thing like that, right? When when they actually, like, uh, walk on the sand, you, it, it is Jurassic Park. Probably you know, like, like the T-Rex. Yeah. Oh, my God, it's Jurassic Park. Mental. Like, scary, scary birds, mate. And um, I think I could knock one out, though. No, I don't think you could. Maybe if you got like, a it... direct like shot on its head. And a small one. Yeah, but like a little baby. <laughs> 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 Just to knock that one out. Little baby coin it. That son. <laughs> no, but like I Is reckon it... I could though. But if you find a six foot one, that's actually taller than you. No, so I hold won't on. call you out. Yeah. Oh, I am six foot. Really? <laughs> yeah. But if you saw a six foot one and if that foot went jab into you first, you ain't knocking that out. I think I would. No. I think I would. Hold on. If we were if if that thing had to stand there and take a punch from me, I'm I'm sparking it, mate. Well yeah, ma- yeah. If it did what if you, it, so yeah, yeah or no? No. If you're if whatever you're fighting isn't gonna move and it's happily gonna take a punch from you, most things would probably be alright. Yeah. Go up against like a gorilla. What do, you, do you just say gorilla? Yeah, if it's going to just sit there and take it, you can beat a gorilla in a fight. It's like... Huh? No, you beat everything in a fight, maybe exactly. by, like, elephant and rhino and that. But I'm saying you got one punch to knock something out. Yeah. And you just said gorilla. Yeah. Do you think... No, 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 no. no. Hold on. From what Rachel said. <laughs> Hold on. Said if it st- it sits still... It, it's literally... punches. It's got to stand there like this and wait for it. You know, like that stupid UFC slapping contest? No, yeah, 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 yeah. Like that, yeah? Yeah. And so why wouldn't you be able to take out a gorilla with one punch? No, not with one punch. It's going to take right, a few Hold on, you back. said it. Just He's not backing it. himself. He's not backing himself. You said a gorilla a second ago. I didn't know we were on about just one punch, though. Right, yeah. No, one something punch. sitting there and you're just going at it. Nah, one punch. Like, it's got to be one punch, right? Nah. Well, in my logic, is a gorilla is a bit like a human, and if you hit a human in the right way in the head, <laughs> knock out. Gorilla's a bit so. bigger and tougher than a human. <laughs> I mean, gorillas are, uh, yeah, they're, they're staunch, yeah, you know. Yeah. In the head, I don't know. Take out the rest of his body, like that's yeah, big. But I think in the end, if you're hitting it, temple. Are you gonna have it? Clean out. Do you yeah. reckon you spark a gorilla? Yeah, if it wasn't gonna retaliate. You reckon you knock out <laughs> She reckons you knock out a gorilla. Are you mad? I'd have to have some practice hits. What? <laughs> what am I listening to? You reckon you could spark a gorilla? If it didn't move. I'm um, I'm baffled by this. What about you? No, uh, yeah, same. How have we even got onto this? Like, <laughs> like we've gone from talking about animals, I don't know. like <laughs> yeah. sensibly to can we knock out a gorilla? Yeah, literally. We, we haven't even got into any topics yet, and we're <laughs> no. talking about sparking gorillas out in one punch. <laughs> I don't know how we've done this. Should we should we actually go on to the first topic that we've got? Probably which best. Is, yeah. Which is uh, animal anomalies of the UK. So it's something obviously we know quite a bit about the weird start, the weird side of animals in the UK, right? So. The UK is probably one of the most nature depleted. Uh, well, I'm pretty sure it is. It, it, I think yeah, it it's is number like one. Seventy percent or something of yeah. nature. Not very country. good. No. So like, um, it's it's shocking. The wildlife is shocking. Everything's rubbish. There's not a lot to see. I think a lot of people. I think I see. I see Australians on TikTok when they come over. They're like, "There's no wildlife," you know, because you go to Australia, there's well, everything yeah. everywhere, right? They come, they come here, and they're like, "Where is it?" We don't have it, to be honest. But there are certain things. That shouldn't be here. Yeah, um, just which, hidden away. Yeah, they're hidden away, and it's really interesting. And to people like Rachel in the room right now, she wouldn't know 
that these animals exist in the UK. Mm. Obviously, you do because you you see what I do and whatever. But yeah. to the average person, which is what this is going to appeal to, they don't know. I mean, so go on. I didn't have any clue half of these were here until like I started going out with you and filming and stuff. Yeah, that's, you know. It's like... I mean, I I didn't look into it though. Like I knew. A few of them yeah. were here. Yeah. But there's some of the more like obscure ones. Mm. I had no idea. And don't forget the sponsor of the podcast is MPB, the largest global platform where you can buy used photography and videography equipment. You can also sell it. You can also trade it. It's a proper good platform, isn't it, Rach? It is. So get yourself over to MPB.com. Look out for all the camera equipment you can get there, the DSLRs, the action cameras, the drones. It's wicked, mate. Back to the podcast. Five animal anomalies in the UK, right? Uh, five animals that shouldn't be here. The first one we're going to talk about, wallaby. A red-necked wallaby. Now, a wallaby is something you would associate with being in Australia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, they shouldn't be anywhere else, really. They're Australian. Um, but for some reason, we have them in this country. And it's there's a few different reasons, really. And it's because you can legally own a wallaby in the UK. And like, let's say I wanted a wallaby like I would want a dog. You can have it. No worries whatsoever. And a few people have done this over the years, uh, usually wealthy people with a lot of space. They usually get wallabies because they eat grass. They're basically big lawnmowers. Do you know what, though? I'm amazed that more people don't have wallabies. Yeah, same. Farmers. Uh, Some do. Yeah, but not many. I think it's more because they don't realise that you can just have them. I guess it's a lot of effort as well. If you're a farmer, you you ain't got time for a wallaby in your garden. Well, they're they're sort of like self sustaining animals yeah. really like they eat grass so it's not like they're going to go out and sort of have a hard time like um and th- basically recently we had uh, in a local area to us warwickshire uh, a place called kenworth we had an albino wallaby knocking about now this little geezer came from um a farm which had these wallabies i don't know if they used like had them to sell or whatever but it, there was like multiple of them and this this one was released um or escaped, but probably the first one. Mm. And he got out, and he's been. He was living there for a long time, about a year, uh, just wild and free, eating all the grass and that, having an absolute field day. Uh, sadly, though, he's died. Uh, oh, yeah. He got hit by a. He got hit by a lorry. Um, so that's 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 one of the downsides, I suppose. But imagine that. Imagine being that lorry driver. You just see a flipping white kangaroo. Is what he's thinking, isn't it? Mm. You're driving along down this road, all of a sudden, bang, white kangaroo, and you're like. <laughs> Sorry, what is going on? Just driven to the wrong country. Yeah, yeah, mad. But so it happens, right? And wealthy people get them. Um, there's there's a there's a famous place in Scotland, uh, Loch Lomond. There's a little island on Loch Lomond called Inchconachan. We've been there multiple times. Awesome. Filmed the wallabies there. Wicked place. Now these little guys from that island were put there in the 1940s by a lady called. Uh, Lady Aaron Colquhoun. I think her name was like Fiona or something. She's a pretty mad woman actually. She um. She was a speedboat world champion or something like that. Yeah, didn't she get, like, world record world for, like, record, fastest yeah. woman on water or something? Yeah. Love that. What a title. Honestly, uh, yeah. it's absolutely insane, isn't it? So she was, like, quite a character anyway. Had this island um, and decided, you know what? I want some wallabies. I don't blame her. Honestly, I yeah. don't blame her either. I'd do it. Uh, I'd do it. Like, just give me the wallabies. No, yeah. They put there in the 1940s. So they are still she, there today. Did she ship them over from Australia? Must have. Where, like, where... Well, because there's probably there's probably like some farms like that one in uh, Warwickshire mm. that, that they they breed them or like zoos or something. Because back in the day it was very sort of lapsed, wasn't it? Like oh, yes, no, yeah. you could own whatever yeah. you wanted. Like you didn't really have to. Yeah, but like in the forties, were people breeding wallabies to sell? Because like well, back then, yeah. zoos and stuff were just getting stuff out of the wild. But there's a guy we're going to talk about for another one. Who it, this guy mental? We'll get onto him in a little bit, but. You, you'll understand from this guy that probably there was a lot more oh, going yeah. on, wasn't there? But, yeah, so these these um, these wallabies have been there since 1940s. They're still there today. And there's a few other populations around the UK as well. And to see one, while it sounds mental and rare, it's probably not the rarest thing in the country, is it? They've probably got, like, native species that Wales. are so much rarer. Yeah, like, because the Isle of Man, full of wallabies. Yeah, thousands of them there. The thousands. Like, it's crazy. And, like, obviously, in England, they are quite rare. Scotland, there's that island, which I suppose are quite rare now, but oh, yeah. mental. Like, wallabies are in the UK. We found them, we sighted them, we filmed them, done all this stuff, and they still come out into, like, news reports every now and then, and it's, it's wicked. Like, proper love it. I love a wallaby. I, oh, yeah. I like, awesome animals. As mad as it sounds, they're one of my favourite UK animals. Because uh, I suppose they're naturalised now, aren't they? They've been here a long oh, yeah, time. Yeah, they've are been they, there for almost 100 years. Are they considered pests in Australia? 
I wouldn't. Uh, I don't know really. Actually, as I think about in some it, areas, maybe I suppose it. I like any animal. If there's like mental amounts of them in one area, mm. it's not good, is it? So can we not just have like a couple, like in the world? Obviously, more than there is. Do you mean from Australia? No, well, no, I don't want that. Well, we can have those if they want. But like, can we not have? How are they are just roaming about in Australia, happy? If you go to like a golf course in Australia, you will see hundreds of them. Yeah. Why can't we have them over here? Like that many? I don't. Well, because the biggest problem people have is the impact that they could have on the environment. And uh, this is a real sort of like sore topic for wildlife people, I suppose, because while there's some definite like reasons to have animals in certain countries, I would say, uh, for population benefits, um, there are also people that are saying like, no, it should be native animals only. And the only reason they're here is because of us. And which is no, yeah, I see it as that. Like, if we want animals back here, bring back the species that are supposed to be here. Like, yeah, get lynx, lynx in. Lynx, yeah. bears, wolves. Like, what, what do you make of that? Do you want lynx and wolves back? Sure. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> right. No. Nah, ma- imagine that though. It'd be, it'd be sick. It'd be sick. Yeah. Amazing. Like bison, lynx, wolves. Get a flipping moose back here. It'd be wicked. Yeah. Isn't it? But they would all just live in like Scotland, I feel. Yeah, they would. Yeah. Yeah. So there's nowhere in England they could be. I don't think. Not really. It's not big enough. It's like like a couple Scotland, areas, maybe. But... Yeah, and even Scotland's not the biggest uh, in terms of like how much wild space they've got. So there's like grouse moors everywhere. That's the first animal we've got on the animal anomalies list. Uh, animal two is. The parakeet. The parakeet. Another the, kind of odd one to think about in yeah. the UK, really. Ring neck parakeet. Fancy yeah. looking bird. Bright green bird just flying around the skies of the UK. Yeah, it's really, really weird. Like, I mean, we've got some colourful birds here anyway, like the kingfisher. Yeah. Like the green woodpecker. But we've also got this big green shouty bird, which is... The, They're so loud. They're wicked, no, yeah, aren't they? Yeah. If you're down in London, yeah. it's all you hear. You don't hear, yeah. like, other birds. You don't hear pigeons. Like, pigeons no. obviously, like, staple of the UK. But in London, it's parakeets. It's just parakeets everywhere. Everywhere. And they're so noisy. No, yeah. So loud. You cannot not hear them. It's mental, isn't it? Mm. Um, so do you know where they come from? How they're here? I mean, originally, they've got a pretty... Wide range from like areas in Asia, they were found like Himalayas and stuff, yeah. but also North Africa, Middle East. So they can like adapt to a range of different habitats, seeing as like, yeah, Middle East is going to be boiling, but yeah. the Himalayas is quite cold. Yeah. And so that makes them pretty perfect for the UK. And then pretty sure it was back in the 1970s, the first few got released from just private collections, mm. people's pets escaping and stuff in the London area. And since then, yeah. They've kind of taken over the like southeast so England. They sort of like start off in London and they've they've spread, yeah, they've spread yeah, basically. basically. That's like, still where they like their main population is still around London mm. though. Oh, absolutely, they're everywhere. But no, yeah. I think you can also own a, a, a ring net parakeet as you are, um, oh, yeah. like without any sort of difficulty. So people could uh, obviously have them escape and all release or whatever. Yeah. But they're a very robust animal. They're very very uh, stru- uh, like good at adaptability. So they they can be everywhere. They're even in Glasgow. Um, oh, yeah. Which is crazy. Like we've got a few in Leamington and the surrounding areas where we are today. Um, they're just everywhere. They, they are everywhere. They're literally, like any town in the UK, there's mm. gonna be one at least. Yeah, very urban dominant as well. Really, like you don't you don't you don't see them in the countryside much. Easy but. food though, isn't it? Easy food, like bird feeders everywhere, bird feeders, which they dominate. Scrap food, like mm-hmm. just falling, and like urban places as well. It's warmer. Yeah, absolutely. And so Especially from a warmer London, climate. Like, yeah, yeah. But out. like, um, th- th- there's there's one in our village. Uh, where we live and um, I went to try and film that all these birds are on the feeders we had woodpeckers Mm. all the sort of like small birds like the tits chaffinches and all that sort of stuff and then you hear this like screeching coming over this this parakeet this one singular parakeet screeches in and it lands in the tree and all the other birds are like oh and then this thing comes and just sits on the feed by itself and he's like this is mine and all the other birds are like right, fair enough and they have to wait their turn they're big enough though to do that yeah, they are. But they're not massive. Like, a sparrowhawk could easily have one of them. Um, mm, yeah, and, and they stand like, out enough. Oh, definitely, like, because it, it's lime green. Like, you can't miss them, especially in winter. Oh, no, yeah. Are they, like, dove sort of sized? Um, doves are smaller than pigeons, aren't they? About the same size, but just, about, like, slimmer, maybe. Like, a slimmer, slim. longer body. Yeah, about, the same. About, about that same size, I would say. Roughly. quite big. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're decent size. They're just aggressive. Um, oh, and, yeah, they've taken chunks out of me as well. Yeah, <laughs> they do. Like, because there's obviously there's a place in London where you can actually hold these wild ones. So Hyde Park um, or St James's Park. There's a couple of places now, but Hyde Park's where we usually go. Yeah. And um, there's a Peter Pan statue, just just a bit 
south, is it? South of the Peter Pan statue, there's like this big oak tree. And if you take like seeds or apples or something like that, um, all these parakeets will come down to your hand, which is really cool. It's oh, a yeah, cool it's thing to do for free in London. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Um, but very dominant bird. I don't think people like them. You can legally shoot them as well. I no, think. you can't. Are They're they protected not? by law in this country. Are they? Yeah. All birds are. It was like can you even get a license? If you have a license, you can. But legally, they are... Yeah, uh, okay, I think that's what I meant. So, like, y- you can't get a license to shoot a, uh, like, a, I don't know, a dog, right? Like, you can't, get, do you know what <laughs> I mean? Like, let's just try what, you can't get a license to shoot a lot of stuff, right? Yeah. But these are one of them because they're classed as pests, aren't they? Um, yeah. Sadly. But it, I can understand it, especially down I mean, the, we've got almost like 10,000 of them in this country. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. And it, really cool, but at the same time, might be a bit destructive. We don't know. Well, Could be. So far, like, I was reading something literally just the other day about, uh, I think it was the RSPB was talking about potential impacts they're having and stuff, and so far it's looking like they haven't actually had any negative impacts on native wildlife. Interesting. Interesting. So that's actually yeah. really cool. That could be really, like, nice to know for the future. Like, And this is something that I always think about, like, animals that aren't doing very well in another country. Could you, could, could you ship them over to somewhere and see how they get on? Like the Chinese water deer, for example. Um, yeah, but UK. again, that just goes back to the whole like native species thing like mm. it could just completely ruin everything for it us could, it could do like, it could be a don't know the long term like impacts but how what do you mean like how 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 <laughs> how so like you just said about the Chinese water deer how would that ruin our I don't understand so <laughs> I, I suppose the easiest way of saying it is like um, uh, in New Zealand it's a predator free country up until a certain point Um, and they introduced stoats and um, stoats absolutely destroyed the kiwi population to the point now where New Zealand are working on a predator free New Zealand again they want to eliminate all of the predators they've got there like the the stoats brats all that sort of stuff because it certain things like that can absolutely destroy an ecosystem so what would a Chinese water deer bring to the UK that we don't want well it's like every every animal has a role though doesn't it yeah. So it could outcompete something else. Though, yeah, but it, they're not supposed to be here. Right. So it's, it, I don't know what animals are really filling in their role for them because they're like marshland really deer. Mm-hmm. We, our deer don't really do that, but like yeah. But even so, they there? they haven't got a predator here. No deer's got a predator here, which well, is no, yeah. a problem. Like it's always a problem that is. Bring in the wolves. Get the wolves. That's back. What I say. Get the wolves. <laughs> get the lynx. Get them all back. Get get the bears. You know, would you like a bear? But then what? Bears. Yeah. No. Why? Scary. They're just a bit big, aren't they? Like, they're just mm. a bit... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they are, yeah. Like, a brown bear would be quite scary, wouldn't it? I think it's still it, cute, though. It, they are cute, but I feel like if we... If the UK was a lot bigger than what it is, so obviously they're in... Where are they? What, brown bears? Yeah. They're in Europe. Okay, where? Like, Switzerland. Everywhere in Europe, really. yeah, everywhere. Like they're well, white Poland, bigger land, isn't it? So they, so <laughs> <laughs> but the UK obviously is so small that I feel like if they just started breeding a bit too much, like if we just ended up with loads of them, they would just get a bit out of hand. You reckon? Yeah, scary. Do you, do you think? I, mean, I don't. I don't think so. I, I think it'd be all right. Yeah, I think I mean, it'd be all right. There's plans in place to like control them still and stuff. So yeah, it'd never get to that point, but yeah, pretty much. I, 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 links will happen in Fingers this crossed, in this yeah. decade. It will happen, hundred percent. Reckon someone just Guaranteed. needs to just buy one and just let it loose. I, it probably has happened. Like someone has probably done that. They probably thought, well, do you yeah. know what? Sick of this. Get the links back, and they've accidentally released one or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, or something. I reckon it's happened. Uh, at some point but that's a topic we're going to talk about in another podcast uh, is the big cats of the UK mm. moving on we've got another animal anomaly and I want to know if you actually know what this is mm-hmm. so this one this animal anomaly is called the gliss 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 yeah you know what that is it sounds like it could either be a bird right or like a um, deer right variety you're wrong. Okay. So a gliss gliss is is called is is like I don't know what's his official name. Is it the edible dormouse? I think it's the edible dormouse. Yeah. Oh. It's his little mouse. But it's it, the one with the like um. It's got the really weird nose. 
Well, no. <laughs> um, so I don't know what you're thinking. You're thinking of like an elephant shrew or something, oh, right? Oh, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Well, um, yeah. Like star nose mole or whatever it's called as well. Oh, that's like, weird. That yeah, freaky yeah. little thing, yeah. But no, the edible dormouse is like, it's, it's almost like the England's like flying squirrel sort of thing. What, what are they? It is a flying squirrel, isn't it? You know, that little squirrel monkey thing. Not monkey. Squirrel monkey. It's not what? a monkey. I said the wrong words. It's um. Like a, the, 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 um I was going to say chinchilla. It's not what I mean either. No. It's, a <laughs> it's just like a, a cute little mask. It's got like a quite a big bushy tail though, doesn't it? Yeah, it's got a yeah. big bushy tail and it looks like it would be one of those, like a possum sort of like flying squirrel looking thing. I can't think of the name of it. The flying squirrel. Is it just a flying squirrel? Is that what I'm thinking of? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's like it's like the England's version of one of them. Now, this is an interesting one because they're in the country when they shouldn't be, but they, they came here through a very wealthy man, Walter Rothschild. Is it Walter? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Mr. Rothschild. Now, you guys have probably heard of the Rothschilds, right? Very wealthy people. Very powerful the world. people, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, there was one of these geezers that lived in the UK, and he flipping loved animals. Absolutely adored them. Um, and he wanted them all, basically. He was like, I need that. Give it to me. He pretty and much he, did as well. He did, yeah. yeah. And he sent out people to go recover stuff. So he's got... There's now a museum in a place called Tring, uh, in the centre of ish of the country, um, and there's so many taxiderms there of like the animals that he had uh, recovered back to his place. Um, there's a thylacine there, dodo, um, dodo like it's, it's all of these weird things, right? Yeah. Um, uh, that have come back from uh, his like expeditions or whatever. He sent people to go and get them. So there's like loads of like leucistic animals and melanistic animals, and um, which are really weird. Extinct species like oh, yeah, like yeah, quagga there as well and stuff. Yeah, quagga. Had all, uh, zebra looking thing Mr. Rothschild he was uh, he got all these animals right but he let them free on his estate mm. so kangaroos tortoises for days like loads of them zebra yeah zebras quaggers but he also brought over the edible dormouse the gliss gliss and they're still there today wild and free in Tring and the surrounding areas next one what we got We've got snakes. Snakes. One that is actually, well, kind of native, some of the species we got here. Yeah. But yeah. another that I feel like loads of people just don't really know about. To be fair, did you know we had snakes? I knew we had, like, I want to call them grass snakes, but I don't think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Grass snakes. Grass snakes. Yeah. So I knew that we had grass snakes. So we've also got we've other got ones? Adders, smooth snake, and the escalapian snake. Escalapian snake. Do you, do you know that one? No. <laughs> <laughs> so the escalapian snake, do you want to talk about that? So, yeah, the Escalapian snakes are only non-native here, but it was, I believe, found here a few thousand years ago. It was like it was yeah. native to our country once. Yeah, a while ago, yeah. It was, yeah, quite a long time ago. <laughs> but it's now in Europe, widespread across mainland Europe and everything. And it's kind of just randomly popped up in a few places around the UK, yeah. like Regent's Park in London yeah. and a couple of locations in Wales as well. Yeah. Weird. And I mean, they're pretty cool looking, aren't they? Yeah, they, I mean, they're lovely looking. Like, a, they almost look like a brown snake, um, the mm. eastern brown. They look yeah. very similar, actually. The cool thing about them, though, is the fact that they can climb trees. Yeah. That's what makes them unique. Yeah, they're arboreal snakes. Did you know that? Arboreal snake can climb trees. Yeah. Yeah. No, but that's cool. You, you just oh, you actually like that? You thought, yeah. Oh, no. You know, like are, are you scared of snakes? No. Oh, so I thought you were scared of snakes. I can't lie. I thought I mean, you were... Big, big, huge ones, probably, yeah. yes. Nah. But... Snakes are awesome. Yeah. But not small ones, no. They don't overly bother me. These guys are all right size. They're like two metres. They can get to two metres, yeah. That's it's quite big. That's, it can, it, it, yeah, I suppose if you see that in one big lot. Oh, yeah, that's like the size of me. It's yeah. quite big. Two metres? You? Two metres? How big are you? Six, two. That's not. That's, I suppose it's nearly, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Up to it, that's like one eighty-five centimeters. Is that? So you're fifteen centimeters away. Yeah. Yeah, that is so, nearly. Isn't so it's it? pretty much. Do I count as nearly? No. no Why? Nowhere near. Why? I'm one seventy-eight. What's wrong with that? Why can't I be nearly two meters? It's <laughs> <laughs> only enough. eight centimeters, isn't it? I feel like um, <laughs> two meters is like a meter too long for me. Um, uh, meter. That's a good size. Just but, a little diddly snake. Yeah. yeah. It's also when they get like big. Yeah. They get massive. Yeah. Anaconda big. Yeah. yeah. When I was at a single zoo, yeah. I held a good big, zoo, by the way. big snake. And it start it scares me when they start wrapping themselves around you. But yeah. not in mm. like a oh I'm just going for a walk, but like a I'm gonna kill you with my pressure. Big strength and that. Yeah, that scares me. But no, small ones are alright. 
I suppose for most people, they don't know we've got snakes in this country anyway. Well, when we were, we were filming the Escalapian snakes, and we literally stood right by one, and nobody had any clue that it was there. Uh, literally no it clue. Was crazy. It was mental. Yeah. Like, yeah, so it's, this was the Regent's Canal, so it's only a little towpath, right? Mm-hmm. Just a little small, probably not as big as this room, the path. And Half the size of this room, yeah. People running, cycling, walking, whatever, doing their thing, and we're, we're literally filming a snake uh, a metre away from where they are. And there's like Wait, one, man. literally, and this one woman, she sort of like come to investigate what we were doing. She was like, What's that? And then we always like, Snake. <laughs> She's like, ah! <laughs> She started screaming. It was like, No, it's all good. It's like, not a snake. Like, don't worry about it. It's well, just here, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Just chilling down, just getting some sunlight. And Having a great about time. Today. Yeah. So we've got four species of snake in the country. Yeah. Uh, all the time. There might be other ones that sort of like rock up from time to just time. Escape pets escape and stuff. Pets. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. But no, four that are here all the time. Really cool ones as well. Mm. Really interesting. Um, we got one more we wanted to talk about of the animal anomalies, and this is going to be the scorpion. The UK's got scorpions. Did you know that? I only knew that because you went to go see them. Right. So, yeah, yeah. I, but, I thought that would happen, yeah. But before then, if you had been like, there's some scorpions down in wherever they were, yeah. Um, I'd have just said, all right. In, like, a little tank or something. But, no, not wild ones. Horrible. Yeah, so th- these aren't horrible. These are actually really, like, as far as scorpions go, they're really cute. Oh, yeah, they are. They're really sweet-looking things. So it's the yellow-tailed scorpion, um, and they came over about 200 years ago-ish from Italy. Uh, they came on ships. So I think at that time... They um, sailed over it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they got little tiny boats, and they were like, on we go. Um, so... They came over on like masonry ships or something mm. like that. So they came in with the rocks and that. So they sort of like hide in the crevices and they can find their way over here. And um, they're, they're really, really small. So probably like half your pinky finger, if that. About that, yeah. Yeah, they're really quite small, but they're lovely looking, like little yellow things. And obviously you shine a light on them, they turn blue. Um, Do they do any damage? No. Nah, no. Beasting max kind Literally. of thing. What, do, you mean, do you mean like to the ecosystem or to you? Yeah, to the no. 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 Like, um, I think the sting, they have got a little stinger, and it's supposed to be, like, yeah, bee sting max, like Jacob says. It's mm. not It's not uh, a Are bad they, one. That sort of animal that they won't... They, like a bee, I guess, won't come and hurt you unless you're hurting it, sort of thing. Or is it like a wasp where it's going to come and get you for banter? Yeah, so they're not going right. to come and get you for banter like wasps. Uh, yeah, they're just sort of like... if you Like most animals, if you... If you Try and be a knob to it. It's going to be like, shut up and like mm. have a go at you. Like, like no, this yeah. would, but nah. I mean, you you would do well to see one. And ninety nine point nine percent of the people in this country are never going to see a scorpion in the UK. So they're based these scorpions uh, in Kent. Uh, there's a little. It's called the Isle of Sheppey. Um, it's a little island. You have to like travel over this big bridge to get there. And they basically find themselves in like the dock walls. So. Imagine like like this little crack in the the wall here. There's like mortar that's like sort of eroded away from the bricks, and they sort of like hide in them. The yeah, oh, like a bit of a better bricks. example. Yeah, yeah. yeah. actual bricks. <laughs> that is well, that's quite embarrassing, isn't it? Because there are actual bricks. But yeah, the mortar. So they would just be sort of like yeah. So you can see the yeah, holes, like you can see gaps. the holes and stuff in the wall. Yeah, they sort of um go in. Yeah, it's it's like squeeze in. Something there. Like how like, like spiders would they'll just go in like. Yeah, yeah, they, they go. Yeah, that. they go in the walls. They hide themselves in there. You wouldn't see them in the day, um, no, if you, yeah. unless you're very lucky. Um, you would probably see them in the night time um, with an ultraviolet light because they turn blue green sort of coloured, and you, they obviously stick out like a sore thumb. Then if they're sort of out and about moving, and I saw quite a few done in the Isle of Sheppey. Really cool, lovely looking things. I had a great time doing that one actually. Mm. Um, trying to find them in the middle of the night in a really rough area. Didn't get any invite to that one. No, no, you didn't. <laughs> didn't even know you then actually. No, nice, did it? yeah. So I don't know what you're moaning. Hey? Yeah. <laughs> Disgrace. Anyway, that's going to be um, the animal anomalies we got for this episode. We're going to talk about more in uh, in future episodes, but we wanted to move it on because we got a game to play. Ooh. We've got an exciting game. Are you excited for the game? I love Get it. excited for the game. Come on, get some hype going. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, good. <laughs> so the premise of the game, um, very simple. You've got to guess the animal sound, right? So it's it's really quite easy. It's, it's um, not, though. No. We've yeah. played it before. It's, yeah. it's a challenge. It is a challenge. So the <laughs> it's a UK animal. It has to be a UK animal. Now, it can be an animal anomaly that we've talked about. So one, one of those things we've talked about today, it could be one of them. Probably um, not. Probably not going to make it one of them. But uh, 
You never know. Why are you really be? nervous about this? Because I'm going to have absolutely no idea. Oh, no, yeah, same. Unless it's like a cat meowing. <laughs> oh, I've got absolutely no clue. <laughs> so I think this is going to be quite a hard one. I'm just going to turn my volume Great. up. So I'm going to play it through my phone. Um, you're not allowed to look at my phone. Oh. That's cheating. All right. But um, well, are you ready for it? So this is this is the... We haven't got a name for this. This is Guess the Animal Noise. Here we go. We got any ideas yet, kids? So, bird? We're thinking bird, are we? So, yeah, my first thought is also bird, because there's, like, pigeon or crow in the background as well. But then I also think, is it a trick? Yeah, it could be. Is it, like, a little little fieldy animal? What are you thinking? I'm thinking it's some type of bird. You're thinking bird as well, yeah? Is it a bird of some kind? Well, got, give me some guesses. <laughs> Come on. I'm not just going to be like, yeah, this is it, actually. Come on, I want it, some it guesses. A, Have a go. Have a go, just bird. Yeah. What What sort of, yeah. like, try and narrow it down. Give me like something. A, um, some kind of finch. <laughs> Is that the only bird type you know? Robin. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, no. Like, uh, so I reckon, I, do you know what? I think it could be some kind of, like, owl. 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 Okay. So, like, you can you can fire guesses, and I'll tell you if you yes or no. Barn owl. No. Tawny owl. No. Snow owl. <laughs> no. <laughs> Waxwing. I don't know. Oh, what, what was that one? Waxwing. No. Damn. I was trying to think of obscure birds. Yeah. No. So, like, a waxwing. They don't sound like that. I, 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 I don't have know what no clue what they sound like, to be honest. No. Because but... you didn't get invited to that one either. So. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what? What? Well, I'm pretty much. Happy do you want? Do you want to hear it again? Yeah. Should, yeah we, should we go for another listen? Right. Do we have a clue this time? Um. Yeah, I'll give you I'll give you a hint, all right? Is it a bird? I'll give you a hint. Are you ready? <laughs> so, do you think that sounds like a bird? Well, part of me says yeah, but then part of me thinks mouth. Right, so your clue is it's not a bird. So I'm right. Damn. So it's some sort of like... Well, you're not right. Well, no, you're sort of it may be in the right direction. So like... It's not a bird. Dawn, is it an animal dawn, anomaly or not? It's not It's not an animal anomaly. So it's native. It's, it's a native animal. It's not a bird. Dormouse. It's not a dormouse. <laughs> uh, I wonder if people like watching this have got this. If you have, make sure you try and uh, let us know in the comment section because uh, I'd be really interested to know if people got this. It's quite. Uh, I, th- I do think it's quite tough. Like I it is, I can't, like, it is quite it now, difficult. I can't think of. Hmm. So is it some kind of mouse? You reckon it's some kind of mouse? <laughs> Thing I think of. No, right, okay. Oh. I have no, no. I have no idea. I, I can't think of anything that sounds like that. Okay. But you're gonna say it, I'm gonna be like, ah. Oh. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you another one. Um so it's not a bird. It's mm. not it's not an animal anomaly. So it's native, not a bird. Um it likes to be in water. What? It Lots likes to all? be in water. No. Nope. Water. There we oh go. God, Damn it. That's the one. <laughs> the wildlife non geek exciting. What happened there, mate? What's going on? She got it before you? He's shambles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't believe. Not what an, I thought an otter would sound like. They're very high pitched, squeaky. Well, yeah. They are, yeah. And uh, that was a little Eurasian otter calling by a river. It's very cute. Aww. It's very very cute. And mm. I thought, I thought you might have got it because I mean the amount of times I've worked with them and stuff. Like, yeah, yeah. So like we've actually like been to Scotland quite a few times to uh, film them. Mm. And yeah, but they never called, have they? Yeah. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they're very high pitched. Yeah, but when, like, when we're there, we haven't heard them really. Yeah. Have we? Yeah. Oh, I just wasn't paying attention. Yeah. Maybe thought it was a yeah. <laughs> But, yeah, that was an otter. Um, mm. If you're playing this game and you got it, well done, by the way. That's uh, that's quite a good going uh, effort, I would say. Shambles mm. from you. You lost to Rachel. I mean, every time we've played this before in the past, I have always lost. <laughs> But, yeah. I think like I, I don't even know how many times we've done this, but I've got like two animals maybe. Yeah, may- it. <laughs> maybe. I'm rubbish at this. Yeah, you weren't very good today either. But no, I, I do think that was a difficult one because that noise could easily be made from a bird, couldn't well, that's it? That's why I said like it could have easily easily been a bird because it also had the bird noise in the background. Yeah, mm. or it could have been like a bluff of a not bird. Yeah, I, it was. I do think it was a difficult one, but we'll be playing that again next week. Um, is it who's goes? It? Your next, next week. week oh, yeah. so you might come with a hard. You come with a hard one. Do you reckon? Or that's a uh, bird. Don't know. Yeah, <laughs> it's a bird. That's a dormouse. Is it? <laughs> it is a flying dormouse. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> so that is guess the animal of the UK. We need a good name for that. Well, can we think of a name for it? Just or guess, the guess the animal. Just guess yeah. the animal. Wait, guess the animal. <laughs> like yeah. 
Is that all right? It works. Um, so talking about sounds though, like animal noises and whatever, mm. I wanted to find out from you guys if you're if you're walking in the woods at night. I don't know why you would be. Like I don't know why you would be actually. A bit bored. Yeah, just yeah. having a little bit of a goosey gander around the woods. Strange. Mm. Pitch black. What is the last sound that you would want to hear? And it can't be a human. Oh, see, I was going to say human. No, um, not but allowed. But not in fox. like. Well, you go fox. Yeah. So, yeah. So mine would either be human because why are you also in the woods, or fox because foxes when they do that horrible. Well, yeah, it's like, like, like screaming. It's like yeah. A sh- yeah, it is a scream, isn't it? Because if you if that was not quite far away in the woods and you heard that scream, uh. no. Yeah. Get me out so, of there. I'm fine with it because I know it's a fox. But mm. if you had no clue that it was a fox, it sounds like someone just screaming. Mm. Like yeah. someone's being murdered or something. It is pretty awful. Do you know what? This is a weird one, but something that always gets me when I'm walking outside looking for stuff. Pigeons. But, like, not, not they're cool. When they do that, they weird, like, flap like a dickhead right, yeah. for no reason. I'm like, what are you doing? Why have you done this? Like, I'm nowhere near you. Why are you flapping like crazy? No, yeah. Hate it. Always scares me every single so time. So you'd be more scared of a pigeon than you would be a fox screaming? Yeah, because I know what it is. No, but sometimes they sound like little girl children screaming. To be f- yeah, I mean, they're, they're not a nice sound. I can't no, lie. Yeah. It is pretty horrific. But, no, I would... I would um, I don't like the pigeons when they just flap. But if it's an actual noise, yeah, I think fox probably does win, doesn't it? Mm. Or, like, maybe hearing, like, a, a badger growl. You'd hate that, wouldn't you? Do they growl? They sort of give a little growl, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> when they're going in for the kill, you know? I feel like that would be quite a cute noise, actually. Do you reckon? You're just going <laughs> back on it now. Like a little badger running at you. <laughs> yeah, but if it was like that... Because then all I think about is Jemima. Right, so Jemima's her dog. Um... <laughs> <laughs> good. But yeah, I don't know. But I feel like a badger wouldn't really come near you; it'd run away. Whereas a fox would also run away. Well, yeah, yeah. but they mm. scream beforehand, don't they? Whereas a badger will only growl if it sees you. But at that point, it would run away. For you, would you? Let's say a, you can hear some it running through the woods, it's snapping twigs and that, and then you hear. Rrr. Would you be nervous? Yeah. I think anybody would. If you're because in. A, if, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Actually, as it goes, I was live streaming down at Newball Common, right? He knows where this is going. Yep. I was live streaming down at Newball Common with, um, just in the dark, having a little live stream, whatever. And I was just about to wrap it up, just about to finish. Next thing I hear is someone someone going, Oi! And I'm like, what, what was that? I was like flipping out. There's like someone having a row or something over there. I get to her, I, I start walking back, and then someone's like it gets like more aggressive it's like why and i'm like flipping it what's going on like so, is someone having a go at me what's going on and it, it keep, and it keeps making a noise and it keeps shouting and i'm thinking someone's after me someone's like and i can see like i had this before i had my new glasses so i couldn't really see and um excuses <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i turn around i see a figure nah a person i would i i think i would actually have heart palpitations fall in the river <laughs> And this person's coming towards me. No. So I, I'm walking the other way. I'm like, I'm not having this. I keep going. Person keeps shouting. Keeps getting louder. And I'm like, I don't like this. I How s- dark? How dark are we talking? We're, we're talking like sunset, dusk. Yeah, like dusk. It's, 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 it's like going dark. still sort of see. It's like kind of like where your vision's kind of going. Yeah. Like, it's dark. No. Like, And I'm live streaming. At this point, I'm like, I'm turning the live stream off because I don't want anything weird to happen on live stream. Carry on walking. <laughs> Next thing I hear, this person's running. <laughs> This person's running, and I'm like, oh, my God. I'm getting really nervous. Um, and, again, I can't see. My eyes aren't good. So I I, I, I sort of then turn around, and this person's in a full-on sprint <laughs> coming at me. Guess who it is? It's this dickhead here. <laughs> it's this dickhead here. And he's, he come out because he, he knew where I was live streaming. So he come out to scare me, and I was beside myself. <laughs> I was, I was wetting myself. It was, yeah. You enjoyed that, did you? I did, yeah. It was, it was great fun. Honestly, I would have died. No, no. So that, that is probably, no, I'd be traumatised for life. I'd never go back outside in but, the dark ever. No, it was effort though. Like, yeah, you had to sprint there. Yeah, I had to sprint like from my house down to where he was live streaming to get there before it finished. I had someone in the live stream, I kept messaging like, keep him online, like, keep distracting him, keep him on. I kept getting messages like, oh, he's about to end it. I was like, shit, no. <laughs> Man, I was I was 
because again, I think the biggest problem I had is I couldn't see, yeah. right? Because my eyesight was mm. shocking uh, before I got my new glasses, and it was just blurs. So I saw this blur getting faster and closer. And I was like, "This is awful." And yeah, it was this little idiot. I, I thought about chinning him there and then. I was like, oh, "Mate, next time, oh my god, I will smack you up." But uh, yeah, very scary experience in the woods. Awful. Don't want to hear that it was ever funny. again. No. It was not funny for me. It. it was not funny for me. <laughs> I'm too old for that. But anyway, um, I think we're going to wrap it up, kids. I think we're going to wrap it up, yeah? Yeah. Um, next episode, you've got something very exciting to look forward to. Mm. What is it? What are we talking uh, about? Some extinct animals coming back. Some de-extinction going on. Oh. Ooh. Some exciting stuff there. Yeah. Also, big one, thylacine. We're going to be talking about the thylacine. Is the thylacine still alive now? Who knows? Or when did it last go? officially we've got some exciting sightings to talk to you about so stick around episode two coming soon